These days it's easier than ever for somebody to get your password for any of your accounts and change them and steal all your details and information. So this video will show you how to set up Google two-step verification. If you use Gmail and YouTube and Google Plus and Maps, uh, many other Google services all take the same password. So if one is compromised, all your other accounts are compromised as well. Google two-step verification will send you a text message or a voice call or a code whenever you access one of your Google accounts on a different computer. So how do you set it up? So start with a Gmail account. So if I go to my Gmail account and up in the top right where your photo will be, you click in there and go to account and then into security. And here you have a, a section on passwords. So this is where you can change your password. And here is two-step verification, which at the moment is disabled. You can also see other information that you should have set up too. So you need to make sure you have a recovery email, a recovery phone number, uh, just in case something happens. Um, but that's, this, that's different from the two-step verification. So in order to set it up, we go to Setup. The premise of two-step verification is that you need some sort of code to ensure that it's you every time your account is accessed from a different device. So a different computer, a tablet, a phone. Um, and once you've logged into your account on one of those devices, that becomes trusted. I think you'll only need to supply a code once every 30 days. So to start, click Start Setup. And then you have to log in back into your Google account. And sign in. And it's a four-step process to set up the verification. First you need to decide do you want to have your codes delivered by SMS, text message or a voice call. And for me the text message is the simplest way because you've always got your phone with you. It can be annoying if you're, a, you're at home and you're on your computer and then you have to go and find your phone that's not actually sitting with you. But the inconvenience uh, is not as bad as somebody overtaking your account. The other one is voice call. So voice call would mean you'd provide a fixed home phone number um, that Google would call and provide a code. And I use that as an alternative. So I'm going to put in my phone number. So you need to select your country, first of all. So I'm in Australia. It already knows that. So Australia comes up there. Then put in your mobile phone number. And this is the phone number that you, that Google will call and send you the code. So in order to verify that phone, you're going to click Send Code. And now with your phone, now you can hear there that that was the text message that just was sent to me, and put in the code that was sent to you. And this code is a once-only code. So even though you know, you've got a, a, a text message on your phone with a code, it's no good to anybody else or even you. Once you put it in, or once a bit of time's elapsed and you haven't used it, you need another one. So you verify. Now, if you didn't get the code, you could ask for a voice call. So perhaps your phone's out of battery or something's wrong with it. So I need to send the code again. And it's the same code. And then verify. And all that's done is verify that the phone number that I sent is verified to my account. And then you've got this selection box here. You can 
trust this computer so that it's never going to ask you for accounts um, again except for that 30 day period. So you wouldn't do this on a computer that you were just sitting on uh, out in the shopping center for example. It's not going to be a trusted computer. Something in your home, maybe a relative computer, friend's computer, you have to be careful if you say trust this computer because it won't ask for codes again. Then tap next or click next. And this is where you're going to turn it on. So you can, when you click confirm, you will have turned on two step verification and it's giving you what you're actually turning on. You're going to be asked for a code whenever you sign in using this email address from an untrusted computer or device. And if you lose your phone, you can always change it in account settings. So if you need a new phone number, you can change that, that um, mobile phone and it'll, then it will then re verify. So we're going to click confirm. Any apps that you connect to Google on a tablet or a phone or an iPad or a Mac computer, a Windows computer, will have to be reconnected. And to do that, you need to actually set up app-specific passwords, which is the next video. We'll show you how to do that. Uh, so we'll do this later. Now this is giving you another message there. You, so for example, I wouldn't be able to access my Gmail account on my iPad at the moment because I've now turned on two-step verification and it's not going to work until I set up a new password for that device. But for the moment, let's just say OK. And there's the actual tab where you do it, but that's the, the subject of the next video. Two-step verification is now on. You can see it here. It's turned on. You can turn it off if you get sick of it. Uh, and it gives summary information. So here's the primary number. It's all blurred out because it is my real number. Um, so whenever I receive a code, I'm going to get it through the mobile phone. And I want them via text message. Now, if I didn't want to use the mobile phone, I could use the mobile app, which is the Google Authenticator app. You can get that from the Google Play Store for the Android market or from the iOS App Store. And you could use an, an authenticator instead. And if you want to do that, you've got to click Switch to App, and then it won't send you text messages. So I've opted for text messages at this stage. Uh, I should put a backup phone in there as well, so I could add another phone number, which would be my home phone number. Because I have a fixed home phone number, or it could be someone else's, uh, another person in the, in the home's um, mobile. And some backup codes. So if I don't have my phone available, I can get some code. So let's say click print or download. And there'll be a series of codes here that I could use if I don't have my phone with me. So I could print these off and, and keep them in a wallet, or I could print it off or save it and put it into a Dropbox account, which I can access. So if I haven't got my phone with me, here's some codes that I can use. And I would save them to a text file. If I run out, then I can generate new codes, and it's uh, often handy to do that. So if I save those to a text file, and then I would, what I would do is save them into my Dropbox. Save. And I put them into Dropbox because that's all, if I'm um, somewhere else and I've got internet access, I can get into my Dropbox account and see my codes. So they're only available for me for that um, device. And the only reason I'm showing them to you is that this account is a fictitious account, so it's uh, not used. Registered computers will also show you uh, other information about this computer and when it was registered, what that means, require codes, means that you, you remove it from the trusted list. So if I wanted to sign into YouTube, and I'm on the same computer, the trusted computer, I should be able to log into YouTube without it asking me for a code. So I do that on the sign in and select that particular account because I'm using two different accounts here. I just have to put in my password and sign in. Click sign in. So it hasn't asked me for a code, and it's just ensuring that I complete all of the two-step verification because I haven't put a backup phone in yet, and it also tells me I've got 10 unused codes. 
and I can update, click the update now button and put in another phone number. So I go into update, I think I better put a backup phone in and add a phone number, another Australian one. And save. So I've now got two phone numbers in. Now the next video we're going to look at what you do if you want to use Google services on a Mac computer or an iPad or an iPhone or a Windows phone or an Android phone because there is a very different process you have to use which is called app specific passwords. So look in the link below for the next video.